So this week, um, I guess we, we kind of come to the end of our At the Cross um, messages. And uh, this week, we see that at the cross, uh, it is finished. And, and as we enter into Holy Week, um, it's kind of like backwards because today we're celebrating this, the Palm Sunday um, where the triumphant entry happened, where, where the start of all um, the happenings that was, was going on in Jerusalem. And it, uh, Jesus going into Jerusalem on this day, those years ago, uh, was a big deal because um, what happened in those years was that Jerusalem was just like this little town and and all of a sudden at the Passover feast, because the temple was there, the town would just multiply with people and people would come from all, all the neighboring towns. So this gave the Romans um, a lot to be worried about because they knew that the Israelites were very powerful and that they had a God they served that, that gave them the ability to overpower many, many armies that had gone before them. You must remember, history is always passed on and it was, they, they knew about this and Herod was afraid of the Jewish people. And of course, you had the, the Sanhedrins and the, the Pharisees and Sadducees. They, they were all worried as well because... Jesus was coming to say that he's the new king of the Jews. And they were quite happy with the arrangement that they had with the, with the Romans right now. So it was kind of like, you leave us alone and we'll leave you alone and let us do our thing here. But now this comes and all of a sudden this Jesus guy, he's coming and everybody's worshipping him. But you must remember why they are. Because I always ask the questions, why? Why was, why was that um, happening? Like what was this big deal? But you must think now, all these people that have been touched in the little towns where Jesus had made uh, miracles, people got to see, the lame got to walk, the sick were healed, and they're all coming to, to do the Passover. They're all coming to celebrate. And so, of course, they're talking, and then they, they see this Jesus, and they're like, yeah, there's the guy. He's going he's gonna to free us. He's going to save us. And of course, they're talking about him being the Messiah. So, of course, there's this frenzy. And of course, the Romans would be getting very worried at this stage because the Jewish people, if they decided to revolt now, there would be trouble. Like, there would be big trouble, right? And then also, um, the Jewish priests, they were like, hang on a second, this is, is going to knock us off our little comfort zone here. You know, we, we're happy here. We, we're, feeding, we're getting our pockets filled, and we, we've got a good arrangement here. We don't want someone to come and mess this up, right, for that. But, but Jesus, he knew. He didn't come in peace, and we'll see that later. He came to ruffle people's feathers. He came to, to do things differently. And I, I want us today to take that message away with us, is that um, the God we serve is a mighty God, and he came for a purpose and a reason. And what he came for, he accomplished. And that's what he said, it is finished. Right? So, it is finished is, there's a, there's a Greek word that says, tetelestai, and it means paid in full. So the Greek word, paid in full, tetelestai. So the sin debt of human mankind was paid in full by Jesus. So um, when we look at the, the scripture verses this morning, and um, we read in John chapter 19, it says, after this, J Jesus knowing, and I'm just going a little bit back to what we read last week, that all was now finished, he said, to fill, fulfill the scriptures, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so that they put a sponge full of sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. And when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. Matthew, Mark, and Luke just say he made a loud cry and he gave up his spirit. But John gives us the count that he said, it is finished. It has been paid in full. So, what is finished? Jesus said, he didn't say, I am finished. He said, it is finished. So what is it? It is what Jesus came to do. 
it is the thing that ruffles everybody's feathers, right? It is the hard part. You see, when we read further to that, it says, since, this is the, the, it, since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies, uh, where am I, um, would not, hold on. I'm going to go back to, to Matthew. Um, sorry. Matthew um, tells us that, Matthew 21, sorry. I have too many markings in my Bible. <laughs> so, the Matthew says, And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And this is the scripture I love to read from Matthew. It says, And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened, and many bodies of the saints had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. But you see, the big thing is, as Jesus said, it is finished. The temple curtain was torn. Apparently, they say it was as uh, wide. The curtain was as thick as, as a man's hand, right? So they, they reckon when you do the, the, the research that two horses couldn't pull that curtain apart if you were pulling them apart. That's how thick that, that was woven. They had so many... Um, it was so many pieces by 82 by whatever, you know, I don't remember all the, the measurements of it, but it was so thick that no man could have taken it and torn it. So we have to know that the veil that was torn was a supernatural happening, right? So when Jesus said, it is finished, God said, that's it. No more separation from mankind. No more. It's gone. We can now enter into the throne room. And that was the exciting part about it. You see, so when Jesus finished what he came to do, it allowed us access, direct access to God. It allowed us to, we don't have to go to the priests anymore. And we don't have to ask them to go and atone for our sins. We can come directly into the throne room. And we can say, God, here I am, a sinner. I lay before you my burdens. I lay before you my struggles. And, and God can answer us. He can bring us that relief that we need. He can bring us the answers that we need. You see, the it that Jesus came to apply, came to do was, um, he says in Matthew 5, 17, Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. You see, when people thought of having a Messiah, a new king, they wanted the, the laws of the land to go away. They wanted there to be a new law. They wanted there to be new things that they could do. And Jesus said, you know what? The Ten Commandments still apply. I'm not here to abolish them. I'm here to fulfill them. And, and it's actually funny, the other day as I was reading in the scriptures, I think I shared it with our Bible study class, was I was reading and... Um, and it, it really struck me that as, as I was reading it said um, that Jesus said to, to the, the disciples, the question was ask him, what is the greatest law? And he said, to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, and with all of your soul. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. And all the other laws stand on this. And when you think about that love, if we love God and we love ourselves and our neighbors, the Ten Commandments will automatically be obeyed. We won't want to murder. We won't want to be jealous. We won't, want to, we won't covet. We won't lie. We won't steal. We won't do any of those things. You know, St. Augustine said, love God and do whatever you want. That's a huge statement. Love God and then do whatever you want. Because when you love God, you're not going to want to do the things of this flesh. Right? You're not going to want to do it. And so Jesus says in Matthew, I have come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And the it that he came to do, he said, I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. But if another man comes in his own name, you will receive him. Jesus says, we're hypocrites. 
He says, because I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of he who sent me in John 6. God, Jesus said in the garden of Gethsemane, as he was, he was saying, Lord, take this cup from me, but not my will. Your will be done. Right? Jesus, Jesus didn't want to. In his humanness, he didn't want to do what was required, but he was able to say, not my will, but yours. You see? And Jesus said to us, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one comes through to the Father except through me. And today's world, this is a horrible, contentious statement. Because there is so many religions out there. There is so many ways to heaven out there. And everybody thinks they have the answer. But the truth is, there is only one way. And that is through Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So if we do not believe on Jesus Christ, we will not see the glory of God. And I don't care how many ways we paint it, or when to make it beautiful, or when to, to make it nice for someone, that if we do not accept that Jesus Christ died on that cross for us, that he is the Son of God, became man, lived and worked this earth for us, and he died and was raised again and he seated at the right hand of the Father and he is intercedes for us with God. If we don't believe that, I'm afraid eternally we will be lost. We will be lost. And Jesus, he did say, he said in Matthew, uh, and, I, and I love this scripture, in Matthew 10, he said, uh, and I don't know how many times I've read it, but as I was reading it this week, I was like, wow, I didn't realize that. You know, in Matthew 10, he said, verse 34, he says, do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I'm like, what? <laughs> what do you mean, Jesus? He says, I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. What? <laughs> For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. You see, Jesus was telling us that it's not going to be easy to be a Christian. When you choose me as the way, the truth, and the life, your life is going to take on a whole different light. You're, you may be in contention with your parents. You may fight with your friends, with your in-laws. Right? In fact, he's basically telling us this will happen. <laughs> And this is going to be a hard, long road for us. But you see, Jesus was willing to take that sacrifice. When he hung on that cross, he knew that not everybody was going to choose him. He knew that he died knowing that those people that, that, that crucified him didn't choose him. They called him a liar. They mocked him. They spat at him. They laughed at him. They weren't all in agreement. And he knew that. But you see, it was finished, regardless of whether you and me agree with it or not. Jesus died for us. What love is that? We sang that this morning. Like that no matter what we feel, what we do, what we say, Jesus loves us anyway. I mean, my mother always used to say, I could never understand it, but it came to my mind this week when I was um, doing my studying. And my mother always used to say um, about little kids that were naughty, only a mother could love a kid like that. <laughs> You'd be like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> but she always used to say it, and I was like, okay, whatever. You know? <laughs> but when you think about it, like, only Jesus could love us. <laughs> really, only Jesus could love me. <laughs> because I'm not always a nice person. I'm not always someone that everybody likes to be around or desires to be around, and I don't always say the right things or do the right things, right? So only Jesus could love me. <laughs> 
And I'm grateful for that. I am so happy that Jesus does love me and that he did stay on the cross and he did say it is finished because he did it for me. He did it exactly for me. And the grace that comes down because of that and the love that comes down because of that, I stand today redeemed. I stand today blessed. I stand today a new creature in Christ because I'm not doing it on my own. And it is hard. People don't always agree with us when we choose to to believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior. And especially this week, we have, an, we have a, a great opportunity to talk to our friends about Easter and to affect the life. You know that they reckon Easter and Christmas, but more so Easter, is the time when people come to church. So this is an awesome time for us to, to just get out there and spread the gospel and be the hands and feet of Jesus. You know, so when Jesus said, it is finished... There's nothing for us to do. We don't have to be crucified. We don't have to do any of that. He's done it. He died for our sins. So all we have to do is believe. It's free. (laughs) How amazing is that? Just like you can tell people tonight the movie's free. (laughs) Right? Come and see a free movie. You don't have to pay for it. And the chairs are comfy. (laughs) We don't have those hot pews anymore. Unless you choose to want to sit in one. Right? (laughs) But praise the Lord for that. And you know, when that veil was torn from the top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks split, that was a supernatural act of God. None of us could do that. None of us could have caused that to happen. And you know, when in Matthew, where it says to us that the tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints were raised. That is a supernatural act of God. And after Jesus was resurrected, people saw those saints walking around. And that was proof that Jesus Christ died and rose again for us. And what an amazing gift. What an amazing gift that is to us. And and we need to remember that this week as we're going into the Holy Week and uh, uh, coming up to celebrating Easter. I mean, Easter is solemn, solemn because of the death, and, and we don't understand it, but it's also a celebration because of the resurrection in Jesus Christ. And I am grateful that at the cross, it is finished, and I don't have to do one more thing to make it happen. Amen?